So you've heard of the STM32 pick AVR and maybe even some of your microcontrollers like the Ario iDot MX series. But which microcontrollers are still worth learning in 2025 and which belong in the embedded dumpster fire? Today we are going to be ranking the most used embedded microcontrollers from my experience as an embedded engineer over 10 years experience from industrial goal to legacy trash. So let's go. So I'm going to be judging this tier ranking criteria not only on the raw performance of these chips, but also things like the ecosystem and community, the tool chain quality, features like DMA, USB, Ethernet, that type of stuff, also the documentation and debugging ability, as well as the scalability. How can you go from low end to high end systems? We'll be judging these chips not just on raw specs, but on what makes a real engineer's job easier in the field. So, starting off in the S tier, we have what I call industrial gold. At the top of this list right now is definitely the STM32. You have things like the F4, the G4, and the 87, which are really scalable, real time, and industry dominant. Next up on the list, you have the NXP i.mxrt, which is the fastest Cortex M chips. They're amazing for edge and any type of graphics applications. Now, the underdog that I'm going to bring next into the industrial go category is the Renesas RE, which is underrated and has good industrial grade quality and it's great for poor optimization. If you're building, you know, medical devices, drones or smart factories, this is where you live. Now, in the eighth year, we have the serious workhorses, or in my view, my serious workhorses. So, yeah, at the top of this list is definitely the PIC32. Right, um, it is mature. Um, MIPS was a strong competitor to ARM, and there's a whole ecosystem out there belonging the PIC32. During COVID, when there's a lot of shortages of chips, who was using the PIC32 had no problem with it. You know, and Harmony 3 is solid, it's, but it's clunky, right? Um, and the nice thing about the PIC32 is you could go from 8 bit picks straight up to the 2 bit ones with using the same tools and the same ecosystem. Next up on this list is the SAM D21, which is great for low power, beginner friendly, and there's also Arduino support. It is a bit more mature now, but it's still a great option, and it could be a serious workhorse because of the ecosystem surrounding it. Next up on the list will be another entry from the STM32 series, the STM32 F030 or the G0 uh, series. These are perfect for bare metal and fundamentals, and they are dirt cheap. If you just need a basic microcontroller for, you know, low pin gun tasks, this is the uh, microcontroller I want to be using. In B tier, we have the good enough. And some in this category are the 80 mega 328, which is still great for small projects or for teaching registers. Um, you have the ESP32, which is really popular with IT developers. You know, it is dual core, it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but in my experience, it's not really that industrial, right? And then you have the RP2040, which has some industrial support because, you know, um, IRO Bench does have support for this microcontroller. It's cheap and it's fast, but, you know, the built-in flash and um, it more feels at a still out of what hobbyists rather than, you know, professionals in the industry. In the C tier, this is the tinkering only tier. In this, I put stuff like the SM32 Blue Pill, the clones, because there are a lot of um, USB bugs. I might experience a lot of debugging pain. I had a lot of issues with the RTC on this um, a particular batch of boards I had. And, you know, this is good for thinking, but I won't really put it forward as, you know, a, a higher tier. Um, then we have the AT Tiny, which is really minimalist fun, um, a stronghold in 8 bit, but it's not really that scalable right, across the ecosystem. Then we have the MST 430, which was hot in 2004. You may come across the MSP series, um, but it's rarely seen in, um, in modern stocks. You don't really see it as much in modern stocks. And finally, we have the D-tier. The D-tier are the obsolete um, microcontrollers that they still may come across from time to time. At the top of this list is, of course, the 8051. The 8051 is like cockroaches. They are everywhere, but no, right? They are teaching tools at best. I would recommend you use them for any 
new projects. The PIC-16, um, the architecture is about obsolete, and it, um, the tool chain is painful. Now, if you are really now starting off after the beginners with PIC-16 and, you know, into electronics, the PIC-16 is really good for, you know, deeply embedded electronics tasks um, because of the 5 volt handling capability and a lot of the core independent peripherals for embedded systems in general. You know, you kind of don't really want to use it. It's a good learning tool, but not a good um, using tool in 2025. And lastly, we have the Rabbit, you know, the HCS, the and the ZAT. These are just um, rest in peace. And if you are using these in 2025, it's probably because you have a 10-year-old factory contract that it just can't escape. So what would I use for a new project today? Right now, I'd probably go with the um, STM32 G4 for the control and signal processing. Or probably even the RP2040 for budget sensor nodes and, of course, the Python support. And if you need serious um, DSP capabilities or USB host and stuff, my personal choice is the STM3287. And if I just want to think, I you know I, I want to experiment, um, the STM32030 because they're really just dirt cheap and you can get them in um, large quantities. I still do use the PIC32 and PIC16 from time to time. But, you know, that's my preference because I am centered in that ecosystem. But if someone is, doesn't really have an ecosystem, I recommend the STM32 or the um, RP2040. So that's it, guys. If you want to master embedded systems engineering from Redis Real Systems, I'm launching a course um, within a month. It will be the embedded systems engineering course, taking it from BM and Telcom coming straight up. What I wanted to do is, in your comments, I wanted to drop um, what's your STA, what's your um, low-cost microcontroller that will really help people in the community. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.